Hello everyone. How are you today? Welcome to Tall Tales with Alex. Your gateway into a universe of adventure and discovery. It's so great to have you with me for today's journey. We're going to use our imaginations today. So get ready to think up all kinds of amazing things. Maybe you could keep using your imagination to do some drawings of our adventure today. I would love to see what you create. Before we begin today's adventure, I've got something really special for you. It's something I would love to make a regular thing on Tall Tales with Alex. We're going over to this episode's star reviewer called Esmeralda. Esmeralda has been listening to Tall Tales with Alex and she sent in this clip. So, over to our star review with Esmeralda. It's really cool how you said they breathe ice. It's amazing imagination. I love the voices. It's really funny. You know what? The personality is by the voice, so I can imagine it. It's so easy to. Thank you so much for those lovely words, Esmeralda. I'm so glad you're enjoying Tall Tales with Alex. If you want to be a star reviewer, all you need to do is send in a video or sound clip to talltaleswithalex at outlook.com and you could be the star reviewer at the start of one of the stories. That email address again is talltaleswithalex at outlook.com. I can't wait to hear your reviews. To the parents, guardians and teachers, you can find me at talltalesalex on Twitter and Tall Tales with Alex on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to find out when a new story has been uploaded. Now, let's dive into a world of imagination. I want you to imagine the front of a shop. Welcome to the magical snow globe shop of Mrs. Cardinal. It's a very tall and thin shop. The bricks are deep red, there are two big windows on either side of the front door. In these windows are hundreds of tiny snow globes. Hanging above the door is a sign. It's old and battered. The paint is faded from all the years the shop has been there. The sign reads, Magic awaits. Let's walk in through the front door. Mrs. Cardinal's shop has so many snow globes on so many shelves that you can't even see the back of the shop. And the shelves are so high that you can't even see the ceiling. Nobody knows where Mrs. Cardinal came from or how long the shop has been there because the shop has been there longer than anyone has been alive. Even though the shop is older than anyone knows, there isn't a single cobweb or bit of dust to be found. If you tried to count all the snow globes, you would be there for the rest of your life. Mrs. Cardinal's snow globes are magical, and every single one is different. They're magical because as we look at them, the snow globes take us to an amazing world far away from the one we're in now. So close your eyes... And let's walk over to a shelf and pick up a snow globe. Wow, that's such an amazing snow globe. Let's get a closer look and see what's inside. Inside this globe is a chicken that looks like it's running very fast. And instead of snow floating around it in the air, there's lots of tiny little eggs. This is the story of two little girls named Lyra and Neve, and the chickens that live in their garden. Or do they really? At the end of a garden in the English countryside was a little chicken coop. A chicken coop is a small wooden building where chickens live. This chicken coop was the home of two very well-behaved chickens named Nuala and Red Ribbon. The garden they lived in belonged to two sisters named Lyra and Neve. Every day, Lyra and Neve would come outside to see their chickens and feed them. In return, the chickens laid eggs, which they collected, and ate for their breakfasts. Lyra was a bit older than Neve, 
and they were both very clever and brave girls. Growing up with chickens was lots of fun, and they both enjoyed playing with them in their garden. Every night, Noala and Red Ribbon would disappear into their coop to sleep, and Lyra and Neve would head upstairs into their beds. And each morning, the girls would head downstairs and into their back garden to feed Noala and Red Ribbon their breakfast. But one morning, when Lyra and Neve came out to feed their chicken friends, they were nowhere to be found. Normally, they were waiting in the garden, clucking with excitement at the bag of corn that the sisters were holding, ready to spread across the garden to be eaten. Lyra shook the bag of corn loudly to see if that would make the chickens come running. Lyra and Neve listened closely to see if they could hear any clucking, but there was only silence. This wasn't like Noala and Red Ribbon at all. Lyra and Neve looked in the bushes. No chickens. They looked in the flowers. No chickens. They looked under the trampoline. No chickens. They looked behind the gate. No chickens. They looked underneath the trampoline again, and still, no chickens. Maybe they're still asleep in their coop, Lyra said to Neve. They've never missed a breakfast before. I wonder if everything's okay with them. Neve strode towards the coop and said, I'll look inside and see if they're in there. And she crawled up the little ramp and squeezed herself through the small doorway and disappeared inside the chicken coop. Lyra waited for a moment. She was expecting to see the chickens come rushing out of the coop, shocked and surprised to find Neve inside their home. But the chickens didn't come. She waited a little longer. Still no chickens. And now, no Neve. In fact, the coop was completely silent. Hello? Neve? What's going on in there? There was no reply. This was very strange indeed. Neve, have you found Nuala and Red Ribbon? But still there was no reply. So Lyra popped the bag of corn into her pocket and made her way over to the chicken coop. She bent down and crawled inside the doorway, squeezing herself inside the chicken coop and with a push and a shove, she made her way inside and couldn't believe what she was looking at. What do you think she saw? She was inside a living room with sofas, chairs, a television, photographs in frames. She walked over to look at one of the photos and saw that it was of Red Ribbon and Nuala. They looked like they were down the beach having a lovely day. But this didn't make any sense. Chickens don't go to the beach. They live in coops and run around in fields and gardens eating bits of corn. Lyra wondered where Neve could be. Hello? Neve? Where are you? From somewhere nearby, she heard her sister's voice saying, I'm upstairs. Come here. Upstairs? But the chicken coop didn't have an upstairs. It was small and only big enough for two chickens to squeeze into. None of this made any sense. Lyra followed the sound of Neve's voice. She walked through a kitchen and into a hallway, and then she found some stairs, which she walked up. And when she reached the hallway at the top of the stairs, she looked left and right. There were a few doors, lots of doors, and she didn't know which one Neve was in. There were so many doors. How were all these doors inside a chicken coop? Where are you, Neve? she asked. In here, Neve called back. Lyra followed the sound of her sister's voice and pushed open one of the doors. Behind the door was a bedroom with a big bed that Neve was jumping up and down on. Look at this, cried Neve. Isn't it amazing? Can you believe all this is inside the tiny little chicken coop? Lyra couldn't believe it. Let's head back downstairs and see what else we can find, she said to Neve. So the sisters made their way back into the hall and down the stairs when suddenly the front door opened and through the door came Nuala and Red Ribbon. Bah! cried Red Ribbon. Bah! went Nuala. The girls let out a little scream. 
When everyone had calmed down, Red Ribbon asked, uh, What are you doing here? Lyra replied, What are you doing here? What is this place? How does it all fit inside the chicken coop? And you can talk? Oh dear, said Noala, looking at the clock on the wall. We're late. We should have been back in the garden ten minutes ago. I told you we shouldn't have stopped by your mother's on the way home. You know how she loves to cluck on. Red Ribbon looked at Noala and said, I know, I know, but you know how much she likes us popping in to say hello. Both the chickens looked at Lyra and Neve before Red Ribbon said, Why don't we go into the living room and we can explain everything? The four of them made their way into the room and Lyra and Neve took a seat. Noala took a deep breath and said, Well, you see, here's the thing. We chickens don't actually live in your world. We have our own world with our own shops, cinemas, parks, cafes. Inside each chicken's home is a special doorway that is a portal to your world. These portal doorways are chicken coops in your world. The only reason we use these special doorways is because you humans, well, you just keep giving us food. We could live very happily in our own world, but if you keep insisting on giving us so much food, well then, it would be just silly and rude not to take it. Wait a minute, said Lyra. So you don't actually need us to feed you? Red Ribbon shook his head and said, Well, not particularly, but it's very nice of you to do so. Also, in our world, food is kind of like our money. Uh, we use food to pay for things as well as eat. So the food you give us in your world also helps us to pay for things in our world. In return, we give you eggs for your breakfast. Uh, we see it as a rather convenient arrangement that helps both us and you. Neve thought for a moment and then said, I do like eggs. So did Lyra. It did seem like a good arrangement. So you're telling us that outside your front door is a whole different world full of chickens, a chicken universe, she asked. Y yes, that's right. Uh, would you like to come and see it? Neve jumped up from her seat and shouted, Yes, please! Noala said, OK, uh, we'll take you outside to show you our world. But before we go, we should introduce ourselves properly. Uh, you, you call me Noala, so that's my name in your language. But in our language, my name is... What? Red Ribbon stepped forward. And while you call me Red Ribbon, in our world, I'm called... What? Well, it's very nice to meet you both properly, said Lyra. We are Lyra and Neve. Well, Lyra and Neve, why don't we go outside and show you where we live? asked Nuala. And off they set through the front door. The world outside was a bit like ours, except that everything was, well, smaller, and the whole place was full of chickens. There were chickens walking hurriedly down the street on their way to work. There were chickens on roller skates, just out enjoying the sun. There were chickens sitting in parks, chatting to one another. There were chickens jogging down the street, getting their exercise. There were even chickens driving cars. The streets were very clean because any little bit of rubbish that was left on the floor and a chicken would hurry over, peck at it, pick it up and disappear off with it. They made their way past all sorts of different shops. There was a coffee shop called Star Clucks. If you wanted to watch a film, you would go to the Cinegma. And if you wanted to fill your car, you would go to Shell. Off in the distance, Neve spotted something that looked like a roller coaster. Is that what I think it is? she asked. Oh yes, uh, that's our theme park, said Noala. We chickens are one of the only birds that can't fly properly. We can only lift ourselves off the ground for a short time. And we have to flap our wings a lot to do that. It's very tiring. So we love to go on roller coasters to make it feel like we're flying. Neve jumped up and down with excitement and asked, Can we go? Can we go? Please? Oh, said Red Ribbon. It is a lot of fun, but it's quite expensive. You need a lot of corn to go to the theme park. 
Lyra reached into her pocket and pulled out the big bag of corn that she had taken with her into the garden. You mean like this? she asked. What? said Nuala. That's a lot of corn. Oh, oh, we can definitely go to the theme park with that. Neve was over the moon. Let's go, she shouted and ran in the direction of the theme park. The other three ran to catch up and they all ran together towards the sound of the rumbling tracks and shrieking chickens. When they arrived, Lyra handed over the corn to pay for them all to get in and they made their way straight to the tallest roller coaster they could find. Because chickens were much smaller than humans, it meant that Lyra and Neve could ride on every single roller coaster. There wasn't a single ride that they were too small to go on. They rode roller coaster after roller coaster. They went on the teacups and span around and around and around until they were too dizzy oh, to walk in a straight line. The log flume was Neve's favourite. They sat in the log and rose slowly, slowly, slowly to the top of the ride before shooting down the slide and landing in the water at the bottom with a big splash and getting absolutely soaked. Lyra loved the Ferris wheel. It lifted them high above the chicken world so they could look out in all different directions. It was a beautiful place full of big green fields and hills that spread as far as the eye could see. Noala's favourite ride was the bumper cars. They whizzed around, bashing into one another and laughing as they spun in all different directions. Red Ribbon's favourite thing was the popcorn stand. There was so much popcorn. But then again, that was probably to be expected from a chicken theme park. Before they knew it, the sun was beginning to set. They'd been having so much fun they didn't realise the whole day had whizzed them by. Neve let out a yawn. She'd had so much fun and was now feeling very tired and it wasn't long until her bedtime. Lyra decided she needed to take her little sister home. Together, the four friends made their way out of the theme park and back through the streets toward Nuala and Red Ribbon's home. They went through the front door and flopped down on the seats in the living room, exhausted from all the fun of the day. We're so glad you stumbled into our world, said Nuala. We want you to know that you're welcome any time you like. There's lots of other things to see and do, but make sure you keep our world a secret. We can't have everyone knowing about it. Humans are a lot bigger than chickens, and there's not nearly enough space for all of us. We'll see you tomorrow morning in the garden for breakfast. And they all gave one another a hug, and Lyra and Neve made their way back through the portal door and climbed out of the chicken coop and into their back garden, just as their parents came out of the back door. There you two are, they said. We've been looking for you. Gosh, you both look tired. Oh, you must have had a busy and fun day playing in the garden. Come inside now, your dinner's on the table, and then I think it's upstairs to bed. You both look like you're going to fall straight asleep. And so Lyra and Neve looked back on the chicken coop and smiled, remembering all the fun they'd had that day, but also looking forward to all the adventures that were still to come just inside the chicken coop. Thank you so much for joining me on that adventure. What was your favourite part of the story? Who was your favourite character? Maybe you could use your imagination to draw something. I would love to see what you make. And maybe you could even write a story of your own. If you're enjoying Tall Tales with Alex, don't forget to tell your friends about it. It would be amazing to share these journeys with even more children. And remember, if you would like to be the star review, send in your video or audio clip to talltaleswithalex at outlook.com. That's talltaleswithalex at outlook.com. There's loads more adventures to go on, so don't forget to subscribe and follow to be the first to find out when a new story is ready to listen to. Parents, guardians, teachers, you can find me at Tall Tales Alex on Twitter and Tall Tales with Alex on Instagram. I'm already looking forward to our next adventure. I'll see you all then.